Week six, lesson five. Okay, so now we're transitioning to geometric sequences. So it's still a list of numbers, but instead of the pattern being either addition or subtraction, it's going to be multiplication. So if you'll notice in the formula right here, we don't have a D instead. I'm not sure why that's writing so funky. Anyway, um, we have an R. It stands for ratio, right? So we're going to be multiplying. Um, so let's, uh, let's just jump in. So for this particular problem here, I know that uh, the first term is 0.15. I can figure out the ratio by taking any number and dividing by the number that came before it. Okay, so it doesn't matter where in the list you are, the ratio will be consistent. This ratio is three, and then this number is u sub n. So here we go, let me write down the formula. U sub one, r to the n minus one. And let's plug in what we know. So 12.15 is equal to the first term, which is 0.15, times the ratio, which is 3 raised to the n minus 1. Now, if I divide both sides by 0.15, I get 81 is equal to 3 to the n minus 1. And the easiest way to do this without having to use logs is to rewrite this in base 3. So I'm going to kind of move over here and get 3 to the 4th, because that equals 81, equals 3 to the n minus 1. And if we've got bases that are equal with an equal sign in between them, that means that those exponents have to be equal, and so n equals 5. Okay, so let's try part B. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay, so in this term, or in the, excuse me, in this example, the first term is 440. The ratio is 1 fourth. Again, you can figure that out with your calculator. Take any term and divide by the term before it, right? Any term, divide by the term before it. Um, so here's the formula. U sub 1, e, excuse me, U sub n equals U sub 1 times R to the n minus 1. So I'm going to put the point 4296875. I'm going to put the first term. I know the ratio is 1 fourth raised to the n minus 1. Now, if I divide by 440, now I have this problem where I am trying to solve for n and this number, if you put it, this over here, if you put that into your calculator, it, it won't give you something that is nice. Um, it, and you can't get it to be the same base. So instead, we're going to have to use logs. Okay, this is how you solve an equation where the unknown value is an exponent. So it's going to be log base, which is the 1 fourth. The answer, which is that really ugly looking fraction that also has a decimal in it, equals the exponent. Okay, so this is where you can put this into your calculator, and then you'll add one by moving this to the other side, and you should get six. Okay, you should get six. Okay, let's try this one. All right, so u sub n is u sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay, so we're trying to figure out what n is. So here's the last term that we're trying to figure out its position. That's an 8. The first term is 4. The ratio is negative 2. Sorry about that extra line right there. There we go, negative 2 raised to the n minus 1. If you divide both sides by 4, And then this one, again, this is kind of nice. I can actually change this negative 5, 12 to be in base negative 2. So that means that 9 has to equal n minus 1, or in other words, n equals 10. All right, on this one, um, let's see, I know the fourth term and the sixth term. 4, 5, 6. This is 54. This is 486. All right, so think about this. If I wanted to fill in this spot, all I would need to know is what R is, right? And if I knew this spot, if I multiplied by R, I would get 486. 
So believe it or not, there's an equation staring at you. If you take 54, you multiply it by r times r, you should get 486. So dividing both sides by 54, you get 9. Check it out. r is equal to plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus. It's really important. Okay, and the reason it's so important is that this location, that spot, the fifth spot in that list can be filled with either a positive number or a negative number. All right, and then scooting this up. Let's see, in this problem, I know the first term and I know the ratio, right? So let me write this in, the first term and the ratio. So it's, it's asking, what is the biggest term, right? So like, is it the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term that becomes smaller than one one thousandth? Okay, this is so much easier to do on the calculator, so let me jump right into that. Okay, so now that I've got the calculator, um, I'm going to go ahead and type in, I'm going to hit Y equals, and I know this is usually where you go to graph stuff, but we're going to use this to make a table. So when I plug in 16 times, and I want one half, so I'm going to just type it as a decimal, times one half raised to the X minus one, and then I hit table, which you, you can see it up here. It's little, it's in blue. So I'm going to have to hit the second button and then graph. So here's all the values, right? When N is zero, you get 32. And when N is one, you get 16. And when N is two, you get eight, etc. I'm trying to go kind of scroll down until I get an X value that is going to produce a number that is less than one 1,000. Okay, so let's see, this is two ten, this is two one thousandths. I'm getting close. This number, and I know that that's in scientific notation, but that is smaller than one one thousand. So the answer to that problem is 15.